SUVs and all-electric hatchbacks may be the flavour of the moment for the modern car buyer, but the compact saloon market is still alive and well. There's the clinically capable Audi A4, the classy Mercedes-Benz C-Class and this, the BMW 3 Series. New for 2019, the seventh generation of BMW's big selling saloon is looking to reassert itself with suitably aggressive styling, brand new cutting edge tech and a sharper all around drive. So does the 3 Series live up to the hype? Is it a match for the C-Class and A4 and can it still really be called the ultimate driving machine? We're going to find out all of the above in a comprehensive Parker's group test featuring each car in one of its most popular versions. We've got a Mercedes-Benz C-Class in AMG line C220D spec. There's an Audi A4 40 TDI S line version and a BMW 3 Series in what else 320D M Sport spec. Right, first things first, let's take a look at the interiors. Stepping into the cabin of the 3 Series, and although BMW has gone with its usual mantra of evolution not revolution, this is still a pretty big makeover by its standards. One of the headline features is this, it's a 12.3 inch digital dashboard display which is standard on M Sport models and a 5.7 inch screen replaces that if you're not getting the M Sport model. And it shows you things like the nav, media, trip computer, speed, all of those important features which you'd like to see right in front of you. The thing is though, the Mercedes-Benz and the Audi A4, they also have that as an option and what they offer is actually quite a bit better. The screens are clearer and there's more options for customization as well if that's what you want to do. Other than that, this is a lovely cabin. It feels really well made, the quality of the materials is excellent and everything is nicely laid out. The central infotainment screen is 10.25 inches on M Sport models and 8.8 .8 inches on other models. And a lot of people like the fact that it's integrated into the dashboard. There's no more iDrive. Instead, it's been replaced by Operating System 7.0, as BMW has catchily named it. It's pretty similar to what you got in the old 3 Series. And that really is no bad thing because it's super easy to use. The menus are nice and crisp and the graphics are really quite fantastic as well. You can control it using the touch screen here or on the rotary dial. It's an excellent system. It's right up there with the Audi and better than the Mercedes-Benz. There's plenty of clever gadgetry too, including an optional head-up display, automatic parking and reversing assistant from the 8 Series fitted as standard, and a Siri-esque personal assistant that can answer questions such as how does the high beam work and what are my tyre pressures? The current pressure is all right for all tyres. Meanwhile, near field communication allows you to open up the 3 Series using your Android mobile phone. Although, for whatever reason, you don't get Android Auto with this car, only Apple CarPlay. So it's a case of one or the other, really. As you'd expect for a BMW, the 3 Series has an excellent driving position. There's plenty of support in these M Sport seats and there's lots of adjustment available too, especially in this steering wheel, which you can get pretty much comfortable with no matter how short or long your arms are. There's no standard fit lumbar support on any of the trim levels, which is disappointing when it comes as standard, at least on the A4 on sport spec models upwards, and the pedals are a tiny bit offset to your right. But other than that, it's a really good driving position in here. The door pockets down here, you've got a special segmented area for your water bottle, which is useful. And there's also another separate place for your gloves or anything like that. Under the armrest, it's fairly shallow, but it's a good size. And then forward of the gear lever, there's two cup holders and the wireless phone charging bay. And in the glove box, it's not a bad size in there. So overall, not bad, could do a bit better. Three series done. Let's look at the A4. It is beginning to look a little bit dated in places in the A4's cabin when you compare it to the 3 Series, but build quality is still right up there. This is still a superbly made cabin. Overall design is also excellent, especially around this climate control area here where you've got dials to change the temperature instead of the buttons that you've got in the BMW and the Mercedes-Benz, and that makes it a lot easier to use. 
The central infotainment screen is 7 inches as standard and 8.3 inches if you go for the optional technology pack. So it's not quite as big as what you can get in the BMW, but the technology behind it, the software behind it, is so easy to use and it's a brilliant system. The A4's driving position is on a part with the 3 Series, so you've got plenty of adjustment in the seat and steering wheel. And it's also nice and sportive as well. Although, as I alluded to, in the 3 Series, you do get standard lumbar support on most trim levels in the A4. Also on a par with the BMW is outright storage space. You've got door pockets that aren't as segmented, so there's a bit more space if you go lengthways. Under the armrest, it's got the wireless charging bay here, but it also is quite shallow, like the 3 Series. There's two cup holders forward of the gear lever and a place to put your change as well. And the glove box, again, decent size, but not record-breaking. Right, onto the C-Class. So the C-Class was facelifted in 2018 and that included a revised interior. Major changes are on the wheel here. There's a new steering wheel design. So instead of being on a stalk, the cruise control switches are now on the right-hand side of the wheel. Whether that's a good thing or not, you can make up your own mind. There's also two touch pads as well, which control the central infotainment screen. And this, an optional 12.3-inch digital dashboard display. All of this adds to what is an elegant and sophisticated cabin but in all honesty, it's still not quite as good as what you get in the A4 or the 3 Series. You do get a nice 10.25 inch central infotainment display, but the software that's on it, it is updated software, but it's not as good, it's not as intuitive or easy to use. And build quality as well. We've often seen creaks or heard creaks and rattles in Mercedes-Benz products, and it's no different in here. It doesn't feel as solid or as well put together as the rivals. If you're into gadgetry, then the C-Class is understandably behind the 3 Series. That is a much newer car, but it's similar to what the A4 offers. Although the head-up display, which you can get in AMG C-Class models, you can't get in the regular trims, which is a bit of a shame. The C-Class's driving position is as good as what you get in the A4 and the 3 Series. Although, take note, people with really big feet, you might find it a little bit cramped down by the pedals. So just bear that in mind. Storage space, this is where the Mercedes-Benz claws it back a little bit in the interior category. You've got a larger door pocket down here. In the centre armrest, it's slightly deeper as well, so there's a bit more storage space in there. Got a couple of good-sized cup holders and a wireless phone charging bay just ahead of them. And the glove box as well. It's an odd shape, but you can fit quite a lot of stuff in there too. Overall, though, it's Mercedes-Benz in last place for the interior category with the Audi and the BMW tied for first. Climb into the back of each car, and while the A4 provides the easiest ingress, it's the BMW that actually boasts the most space, with impressive head and leg room, as well as superior shoulder room for when you need to get three passengers across the rear bench. For boot space, the A4 and 3 Series both offer a 480 litre capacity with the rear seats in place, with the C-Class lagging behind on 455 litres. Opting for each car's extended storage pack is recommended, as they'll get useful additions such as extra luggage netting in the boot. Overall, for practicality, the BMW and the Audi are in joint first place, while the Mercedes is just behind in third. Four things you need to know before buying an executive saloon car. A brand new model at the time of filming, the 3 Series shows a 10% premium on monthly PCP finance costs versus the A4 and C-Class. All cars feature a three-year warranty from new, although only BMW and Mercedes-Benz guarantee this alongside unlimited miles. Audi may be famous for its Quattro all-wheel drive, but both the C-Class and 3 Series can also be had with four driven wheels. Other contenders outside our trio include the Jaguar XE, Lexus IS, Volkswagen Passat and Alfa Romeo Giulia. This car has always had an excellent reputation for how it drives, and the new one, it's no different. The steering is really nicely weighted, it's accurate as well, and the car's direction changes are second to none. There's very little body roll, it's got really good control over the axles, and outright grip is also incredibly high as well. You can carry some serious speed going into corners with this car. 
Now we have the X-Drive all-wheel drive system fitted to this particular model and although it does offer very good traction in slippery conditions it's probably not strictly necessary unless you live out in the sticks and you often go across muddy rutted tracks. Thankfully all that excellent handling doesn't mean comfort has been too badly affected. Now obviously this is the M Sport spec on the standard suspension and the larger 19 inch alloy wheels that does mean you've got a rather firm ride but this car we should point this out in the interest of fairness because the other two cars don't have this this car does have the adaptive dampers so you can change the firmness of the suspension and in comfort mode it's pretty damn good you've still got a nice comfortable cruiser at low speeds and high speeds but then, then tightens up and gives you a much firmer more communicative drive when you're going a bit quicker Overall refinement is about as good as it gets for a car of this type. There's very little engine noise unless you're really, really redlining it and you don't have to when there's so much torque on offer and the wind noise and road noise are also nicely hushed as well. As we said in the intro, the engine in this particular car is the big selling 190 horsepower 320D. It's got 400 newton meters of torque and goes from 0 to 62 miles an hour in 6.9 seconds and is capable of up to around 52 miles per gallon on the average fuel economy cycle. It doesn't actually feel quite as quick as that 0 to 62 mile an hour time suggests. That might be a bit surprising but there is still plenty of low down grunt, plenty of in-gear acceleration, which means it's perfect for motorway cruising. This gearbox as well, it's excellent. The changes are nice and smooth, they're slick, and they're also very well timed too. And you can take manual control of them on the paddles behind the wheel here, and they're really, really responsive too. Like the 3 Series, the Audi A4 has a 190 horsepower 2 litre TDI engine producing 400 newton metres of torque and accelerating to 62 miles an hour in 7.9 seconds or 7.5 seconds for the Quattro version. Unsurprisingly, this engine feels by and large the same as the one in the BMW, so it's actually a little bit coarser when you're accelerating but it does feel a touch more urgent, which is quite interesting. The gearbox is a seven speed automatic, and although it's slower and not as responsive as the one in the three series, it does the whole luxury smooth changes thing actually pretty well indeed. Now this car is an S-Line model, so it's got the firmer suspension and there's also 19 inch alloy wheels, but it hasn't got, unlike the BMW, it hasn't got the adaptive dampers. It's the regular passive dampers. And it has to be said that if you're going to get this spec with the larger wheels and the firm suspension, you need to get the adaptive suspension. Otherwise, you end up with a car that doesn't actually handle as well as the 3 Series, but is just as firm, if not a little bit more. So not a huge amount of points in it. Engine refinement is a touch coarser than the 3 Series, so it's a bit louder when you're going through the gears, but it's still pretty silent when you're cruising. There's a touch more road noise as well, but the wind noise is actually kept down to a good level. So not too far away from the BMW in terms of refinement. This particular A4 comes with the standard front wheel drive setup. You can, of course, get the Quattro all wheel drive system. So you get an equivalent to BMW's X-Drive. And you can tell that this is a car that's predominantly been driven through the front wheels. There is understeer, so you will wash wide on a corner, but you really have to be going very, very quickly indeed to get that, otherwise there is plenty of grip. It's lighter and easier to steer around town, but there's not as much feel or accuracy as there is in the 3 Series. And there's more body roll as well, so you'll feel the car leaning in corners. All of this adds up to make a drive, which is very nice, very sophisticated, but again, not as much fun, not as engaging as the 3 Series with its excellent drive. On to the C-Class and the engine in this particular car is, surprise, surprise, a 2.0-litre turbo diesel. And it's probably the best overall engine in the C-Class range. It's got 400 newton meters of torque. It accelerates from 0 to 62 miles an hour in 6.9 seconds. And it's got 194 horsepower, which is four more than the 3 Series and the A4. And although that shouldn't make a difference, for some reason it does, because this is noticeably quicker when you put your foot down. It's really urgent and it really goes. 
And that comes in spite of the nine-speed automatic gearbox, which although has got plenty of ratios, can be a bit slushy, a bit slurry when you're really pressing on. But otherwise, it's nice and smooth and does a good job of wafting you around. As for comfort, this car is on the standard passive damper, so the same sort of setup as the Audi A4, but it's got smaller wheels than the other two cars at 18 inches, which is the standard fit wheels on the AMG line cars. So although it should be theoretically com more comfortable than the A4, it isn't. It's pretty much the same, so it can feel a bit harsh over broken surfaces and never quite settles down properly. Refinement, that could also be better, especially coming from the engine now. It is powerful, it does feel quick, but it makes a racket while it's going through the gears, although wind noise and road noise are both kept down to a minimum. Like the 3 Series, the C-Class comes as standard with rear-wheel drive, but it doesn't feel anywhere near as sporty. The steering is pretty quick, but it's not all that feelsome, and there is more roll in the corner, so you will feel the body leaning out when you're really pressing on. And as a result, direction changes, they're not as crisp either. Now, this lack of sportiness, it would be fine if the C-Class was more comfortable than the A4 and the 3 Series, but because it isn't, that means that in the driving category, this car comes in third and the BMW is the winner. They may have lost the edge on desirability and flexibility to high riding SUVs, but 2019's crop of executive four doors shows there's still plenty of life in the now not so humble saloon car. Has the 2019 BMW 3 Series been able to take top spot? In short, yes, it has. The Audi A4 and the Mercedes-Benz C-Class aren't actually that far behind, but the BMW's winning cocktail of excellent comfort, strong practicality, eye-catching brand new tech, and a brilliant all-round drive means it takes the victory spoils today. And if you fancy reading more about this group test, click on the link in the top right-hand corner of the screen now.